How's it going, everybody? Welcome to my Mandalorian Episode 3 review. I've already reviewed the first two episodes. If you guys want to go back and watch those, I'm just going to make this a giant playlist. And then every week, I'm going to go over each new episode. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do like the review part in the first section of this video, and then I will give out a spoiler warning. And then if you guys don't want to be spoiled, you can just leave the video then. And then the second half of this video, I'll just talk about the spoilers and what my opinions are instead of just making two separate videos. So, as for this episode, did I think it was good? Um, yeah, I, I really did. Uh, I saw an IGN review pop up, and like but right before I watched the episode, and they compared it to like a John Wick kind of feeling. And, I mean, I'm gonna have to agree. It did kind of feel like John Wick in this episode. There was a lot of action, which I adored. I love that. And I've said this before, and I'm just not used to Disney Star Wars feeling like Star Wars. And to me, The Mandalorian has like this real dark presence to it. Like it feels, it, it feels like they're taking risks. It's like they know their target audience isn't children. Like when you look at episode seven and eight, you have BB-8 and you have Porgs and you have Rose and her little horses and you had Hux and he got turned into like a joke character and he just gets bossed around and Poe makes mama jokes it just has this real light feeling to it and then in episode 9 they're adding that new hair dryer droid and they just have all these kid friendly remarks and stuff in 7 and 8 and I would imagine Nine's probably going to be the same way. I hope that it's a darker movie but with The Mandalorian it's like darker kind of show the violent acts are far more violent than anything you're going to see in like 7 or 8. Like in The Mandalorian, people get disintegrated, people explode, people get stabbed. It's awesome. It's freaking awesome. Now, I don't think like The Mandalorian is the greatest thing ever. I just am really excited with the way that this show's going. And every episode so far has got me more and more hooked. Every episode leaves me with more questions, it makes me want to come back, it makes me want to watch more, and I just love the feeling of every single Friday, I have something new to watch from Star Wars. Uh, but as for the episode, I mean, there's not too much I can get into without mentioning spoilers. Like I said, there's a bunch of action, and I mean, I can't really get into why there's a lot of action, because it, it gets into spoiler territory. The explosions are good. The effects are good. The uh, the blaster, it's got kind of like a night ops kind of infiltration stealth mission kind of feel to it at first. And you know, overall, I mean, it was just a good episode. Like every episode so far has been in like the eight or nine area. And for me, this episode's going to be probably about an eight out of ten. I, I think it had a very slow start to it. And one thing that I've noticed about Mandalorian is like a lot of scenes are just him walking. And it's starting to feel like they're doing that to kind of draw out time. Because they did it in the first episode. It just showed him walking around, which I understood why they did it then. And then they did a little bit in the second episode of him just walking. And then in the third episode, it showed him walking around in the same places that he walked around in the first episode. So <laughs> it's starting to feel like all the walking that he's doing is just to draw out time, make it reach that 30 minute mark. Because I'm willing to bet at least five to 10 minutes is kind of just him wandering around walking, which it's it's starting, like here on episode three, it's starting to get to the point where I'm noticing it and it's kind of starting to bother me. Like, hey, I don't want to watch this cool looking Mandalorian just walk around, especially in places I've already seen him do that in. Uh, so I hope that they change that in the future. And that's the only thing that's really holding this episode back from like being a nine out of 10 or maybe even a 10 out of 10, because I love the action. It's just, it was just really slow at the beginning part. So I did like the episode, giving it an eight out of 10. And I mean, I highly recommend it. it it's awesome Star Wars, that's all I gotta say. So now I'm going to get into the spoiler area. So if you've not seen the episode yet, I would turn away, because now I'm going to talk about some of the individual spoilers. Okay, so you've been warned. This episode is about him turning in the bounty for Baby Yoda, or whatever that creature is. You, you know what I'm talking about. So he actually takes back the bounty and turns it in. I'm like, I, I didn't expect him to do that, but he actually did. So he hands over the child, 
and he gets paid handsomely. Like when he turned in the bounty and the old guy just whips out this like giant canister of I guess metal. He opened it up and it was like stacked with metal. So he got paid greatly. <laughs> like that Yoda creature had to have been like worth a crap ton. So he got paid greatly. He got like an entirely new outfit, which looks cool as hell. Like he's just rocking nothing but like shiny armor and he looks cool. And he had some interaction with the other members of the guild and he was like arguing and had like a little sparring match with one of the other Mandalorians, which I thought was cool. It's kind of interesting to see how they're all like on the same team, but they don't necessarily get along kind of deal. So he got new armor, which I think looks badass. Cool with that. But then he decides instead of like going out and doing another bounty, he gets to thinking about the baby Yoda and he decides that he wants to go back and save the baby, which I'm okay with this. I went into this show thinking I want to see him be neutral. I don't want him to care about the good guys or the bad guys. I just want him to do bounties and do whatever is in his best interest. So this episode, he's kind of being a good guy in a way, but at the same time, he's just kind of doing whatever he wants, which is interesting. I don't understand what he's going to do with this baby or what his plans with it are but I mean the fact that he went back to go get it that doesn't really bother me especially since baby Yoda's so cute like I'm, I'm fine with baby Yoda hanging out for the rest of the episodes but the scenes where he's like infiltrating the area and he's being all stealthy and he blows up the, the building and he's taking out these stormtroopers some of the ways that he was taking out stormtroopers was like intense like I'm like wow this is coming from Disney like it's not that big of a deal like him stabbing stormtroopers with knives that's that's not a big deal to me like I'm I've seen so many action movies over the years that's nothing like I'm not even batting an eye at that I just think it's awesome to, to watch but I'm just surprised that that's coming from Disney like when you look at the sequel trilogy you have lightsabers aren't even cutting off limbs they're like barely scratching people Kylo got a scar Finn just survived the lightsaber strike like it was nothing and the sequel trilogy just seems like it's toned down so much for me that i'm just not expecting the mandalorian to be stabbing stormtroopers with knives or completely disintegrating other bounty hunters or the one scene where he whipped out his flamethrower and he completely just melted through that one stormtrooper i was like damn I don't know if they watched this episode or what, but that was a pretty ballsy move for Disney to allow someone to get like burnt like that. And then it showed his armor melted and you could see the Stormtrooper's face like through the helmet. And I was like, wow, that's pretty freaking cool. Like that, that was awesome. Uh, and then there's multiple scenes where he was outnumbered and he like shot his little missile tracking things. I forget what they were called, but it killed like four of them at once. And it was just so much action in this episode. It was freaking awesome. And then once he's trying to escape, all the other bounty hunters are attacking him. That scene was a little unrealistic for me because he was outnumbered like 50 to one and he took out everybody. I was like, okay, this, this guy's not invincible. This is kind of, this is getting a little bit unbelievable on my end. Like he, he was getting some pretty hardcore plot armor in some of those spots um, but then all his uh, Mandalorian buddies showed up with their jetpacks and started fighting off all the uh, bounty hunters which which I thought was pretty cool not really sure why they showed up to help him other than the fact that he's just a Mandalorian I don't know how they knew he was in trouble I don't know but it was cool to see and then at the end of the episode he referred to how he needs to get himself a jetpack which I agree I think that'd be pretty cool but overall this was a pretty action-packed episode I thought it was really really cool and like I said, I don't know where they're going to go from here. They're going to have to move the guild now since all the bounty hunters and stuff are aware of all the Mandalorians that are there. So they're going to have to move that. Uh, who knows what they're going to do with the baby Yoda. Like he's just chilling with him. I don't know if he has a goal. I don't know if he has someone he's going to take the baby to. And then what was the Empire so interested in extracting from this baby Yoda? Because the one guy that was in charge of the bounty didn't seem to care if the baby lived or died. He just wanted to extract something. I'm assuming something to do with the force from this baby. Maybe they're extracting force sensitive stuff from children to like use that for palpatine or something in episode nine like that's a bit of a stretch i don't know what they're doing that's just a theory off the top of my head like maybe they're just extracting the force from this force sensitive child because they know how powerful in the force it is and then they'd use that to like send it out towards palpatine because palpatine's still alive i don't know uh but let me know what you guys think 
What did you guys think of the episode? Did you like it? Did you dislike it? And then let me know what your guys' theories are. Like, why do you think that they're trying to extract stuff from that baby Yoda? And then if you guys haven't yet, be sure to check out my previous two reviews of the first two episodes. And then going forward, I will be reviewing every other episode after this. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Check out another video. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And I will talk to you guys next time. We would be honored if you would join us. You cannot resist.